Welcome to the Malvern Applications Laboratory. I'm standing in front of a Viscotech TDA MAX system which we use to characterise molecules in solution. The properties we measure are concentration by a refractive index or UV, molecular weight with the addition of light scattering, and also this property of intrinsic viscosity, which I want to talk to you about now. Now, technically, intrinsic viscosity is the contribution of a single molecule in solution to the overall viscosity of that solution. Intuitively, it's far easier to think about intrinsic viscosity as a measure of the inverse of molecular density. Thus, changes in intrinsic viscosity relate to changes in density. For instance, some molecules will be very small, compact when they're in solution. They will have a high density, but a very low intrinsic viscosity. Other molecules are much more extended and open in solution. And therefore, they will have a much higher intrinsic viscosity and a much lower density. So a high density, low intrinsic viscosity molecule would be something like a protein, whereas a high intrinsic viscosity, low density molecule would be something like a polysaccharide, such as hyaluronic acid. Now, as such, changes in intrinsic viscosity relate direct directly to changes in structure of the molecules that are being characterized. For instance, branching or conformational changes or changes in backbone structure will all affect how a molecule folds up how tightly packed it is, how dense it is when it's in solution. And thus, all these changes will relate to changes in intrinsic viscosity. So, branching is a classic example of this. If we add branches to a synthetic polymer in solution, it allows that molecule to contain more, effectively more turns within the molecule, allowing it to be more compact in solution. Thus, its density will increase and its intrinsic viscosity will decrease. And it's that application that I want to show you now. On the, on the software. Here we can see a pair of samples, uh, two homopolypeptide samples of differing molecular weight plotted on a Mark Howing plot. Now the Mark Howing plot shows intrinsic viscosity on the y-axis as a function of molecular weight along the x-axis. We can see here that both of these samples have a distribution of molecular weights and intrinsic viscosities and thus they form lines on the Mark Howing plot. We can see one sample here and the second higher molecular weight sample on the right. So what does this tell us about the structure of these molecules? Well, let's take the first one. We see its range of molecular weights and intrinsic viscosity. And for a higher molecular weight sample, if we were simply to increase the molecular weight of this sample, we would expect the intrinsic viscosity to fall along the same trend as the current line. In this case, we would expect with increasing molecular weight, increasing intrinsic viscosity further up the chart. But for the high molecular weight sample, we don't see this. We see a broadly similar intrinsic viscosity, which is actually considerably lower than we would expect if our first sample was simply showing an increase in molecular weight. Thus, the high molecular weight sample has a lower intrinsic viscosity than expected, and that relates to a higher density than we might expect. Now, this relates to a change in the structure of the molecule. So, the most obvious explanation for that is that the high molecular weight sample has a high level of branching within the molecules. This, as I said before, increases the number of turns within a molecule, increases the folding and the packing within that molecular solution, allowing it to pack more mass into a given volume, increasing its density and decreasing its intrinsic viscosity. Now, for this sample, a homopolypeptides of differing molecular weight, this may influence the biochemical activity, if we were looking at polysaccharides or synthetic polymers, it would undoubtedly affect the final structure of the material we were producing, which would affect the material's properties and its final characteristics. And in the end, that's what we're all interested in. Thanks very much for listening.